zero waste isn't anything new. Actually, we've been, you know, the oldest jean or, or the oldest trouser that's actually been found is a zero waste garment. So it's something that um, everyone's been doing, you know, for, for like millennia. It's something, you know, fabrics were so expensive to make, so labor intensive, let's say so labor intensive to like make. It was crazy for people to lose things or to cut things away or have wastage. So here's some evidence of some examples of, of, of amazing zero waste garments sort of like through the ages, you know, everything from kimonos to, you know, even like sort of sort of sort of like sort of like Danish and like sort of like European garments, shirts. I mean, even this amazing garment from, you know, this whole jump jumpsuit, which is a completely zero waste like garment. So it's nothing, nothing new at all. And it's something that, you know, all designers and all companies should be looking into because it's crazy that 20 to 30% of fabric, even 40% of, let's say if you're using checks and stripes, when you start doing that kind of work, you waste so much fabric. So um, I was very honored to look at this uh, with, uh, with deep, deep eyes and I'm excited to do a zero waste that collection. Okay, let's talk about the patterns now. So we managed to design uh, quite a few styles for this like collect sort of collection. And each time I had to radically really think like differently how, how I actually did it. So here's an, here's an example of the chore or the actual chore jacket. And if you notice, there's only small amounts of way wastage where I've highlighted it in like yellow. And I think with even more like refinements, and if I had another six months or so to like develop this collection, I could probably eliminate all, all, all of the waste. But it's a really nice exercise to see that even the sleeve I managed to fit everything in. And I've still kept the shape of the sleeve by putting darts in, which is quite interesting way of, of actually working. And even the pockets and everything else we cut them as squares, but we can actually fold things away to still have a, a chore jacket appearance. So it's actually quite nice. So this is the chore jacket first, which is cool. And then this is the style I'm extremely proud of. This is actually one of the first um, uh, pants that I did. So this is actually using uh, one of the actual selvage that actually like qualities. And what I did was I managed to fit both the front and the back leg onto the, on, onto the pattern. But what I did is I did something that you shouldn't really do is I've used the reverse. So I've used the front of the leg on the left side and the back of the leg on the right side to make it fit, which is quite strange. And then what I've done is where there's the coin pocket, actually, I've put the scoop pocket where the coin pocket is. And I know that this piece is just one leg. So when you mirror the pattern over, you get the coin pocket from where the pattern is, which is quite clever. So I managed to fit the coin pocket onto where the scoop is. And then to give it more shaping, because obviously this garment will end up being quite boxy, I've put darts in on the waist and I put darts in near the hem just to give it a slightly more tapered appearance. And I managed to fit in the pocket bag and the pockets, even the belt loops and even the one piece fly onto this one sheet, which is unbelievable. And the only bit of waste that you can see, again, is the bit that's highlighted in yellow. And again, if I had a bit more time, maybe a couple months of just pure like development, I could probably get rid of that yellow and it'd be completely zero waste. But, and then also what I did for the waistbands, we got three strips and they, uh, from end to end and, um, you know, the waistband is quite cool. There's no wastage on, 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 that, on that also. So this is just one leg and I just have to repeat it and I've got a full jean. So very, very excited to do this pattern. And one of my first attempts, which I was quite excited about. And this is a longer piece now. So this is actually the trucker, trucker jacket. Um, this was also done in selvage. And obviously working in selvage, I think is slightly more easier only because you can, um, you've got a nice selvage edge. So you can put lots of things against it. You know, the inside of the cuff, any kind of, any kind of feld or facing, you can put right up, right up, right up against it. So what I did here is, it's hard, hard, to, it's hard to see, but what I did is I basically fitted the entire jacket on this one sheet of paper. And again, the only bits that I couldn't manage to fit in are the bits that, it, that are in like yellow. So it's a tiny amount, no bigger than an A4 sheet. So I'm really proud of it. It just meant that I had to do the sleeves so they're a bit more boxier, which is fine. Um, I put I've, some of the sleeves have got selvage like sort of like sort of like details at either side. So on the style, you get selvage going down the sleeve. And I'm one of these people that is not too keen to show off selvage. I think selvage should be hidden. But for this style, I, we managed to uh, show it off in a really like sort of like unique way. And uh, from the collection that you have seen, the pictures of the collection, you'll see that it's not that obvious that there's selvage everywhere but not at all. I'm, I'm very excited about this collection. And we even put darts in, in really unusual places, especially where the yoke is. And, and which even on the, front, on the front part of the yoke, we put a dart in as well. So just to give it a slightly more shaping, which is awesome. So the next gun, pretty awesome. This one's actually using the wide width uh, sort of fabric. 
And what we did is we managed to fit the entire pattern across one length. So I think only about a meter or so, or meter point two has been used. And there is slight bit of wastage on this style. Well, what I actually did, did was after I completed the style, I added in a cinch, I added in a cinch buckle. So the slight bit of yellow that was left over, we managed to make a cinch buckle from that. So in the end, there wasn't much wastage at all on this entire style. So again, extremely uh, proud to have done this style as well. So really, really cool. So for the logo for uh, Nothing Goes to Ways, I really wanted to um, design it in such a way that was really collaborative. So it felt collaborative. It felt like we were doing this together. It was a cone and drama genealogy project. And I guess it just naturally became a circle. And I think it's interesting because I think it evokes uh, that just that simple connection to circularity itself. But also I kind of always saw it as something that's moving and something that's collaborative and something that's got that's energetic and um, almost like a globe or like a world of its own, even though it's just a bit of type in in a circle. But for me, like that's what this logo represents. The whole design process took place during the pattern making. And yeah. so you probably would not have designed it um, if you put it on paper to have the selvage on the outside. I honestly yeah. was very unhappy nice that idea. the selvage was showing. I was actually physically upset. And I was like, I have to figure out a way to jigsaw this puzzle a bit differently. So it's hidden in the inside. I managed to hide the selvage on the center, center back on the chore jacket. But on the other bits, I was like, and I didn't want to hide it away that it was hidden inside a seam because that would have been upsetting as well I said it has to be at least showing somewhere so I had right. to compromise and what I did is I did, I did a really clever sewing technique where I had half of it showing and the other half and I covered most of it away so it was like a little sliver of a salvage. The most important thing about this collection and you know Mosin um, and what he's done is going to be able to show the industry that you can actually create a zero waste design um, from a fabric perspective. The range of these fabrics um, promote a circular economy um, in, in one, you know, in one type of ingredient that we've addressed in the construction, the fiber, uh, the dye, the finish. Um, and the important thing is, is that it is attainable for the industry. So uh, we want to create fabrics that have um, a tiered approach to the circular economy and sustainability. Um, you know, and, you know, economics are also um, something to be considered. And we understand that. So that is, you know, if we can't create something attainable, um, we really can't move the industry forward in, in being able to um, create something that is zero waste and, and that type of thing. So um, I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out.